G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder. Today we're having a look at the Meteor F Mark VIII and this plane has a special place in a lot of War Thunder players' hearts. Around the time I was reaching top tier, this was one of the best British planes. I think it actually was considered the best British plane and it was a very, very formidable enemy, but now it is a shadow of its former self. That being said, it still has plenty of excellent traits, even all the way down at 8.0, and it is a great plane to fly. Of course, when you're in a down tier. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, but first, a word from today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Opera GX. Most browsers are boring, but not Opera GX. Opera GX is packed with features that genuinely enhance and customize your browsing experience, particularly for gamers just like you. Opera GX has unparalleled levels of customization, accessible through GX mods, where you can have everything from giving websites the Mexico filter to wallpapers. They even have the option for background music. Don't you feel nice and calm? Opera GX's GX control feature allows those with struggling PCs and internet connections to limit how much CPU, RAM, and internet bandwidth it uses, allowing you to watch YouTube content without causing in-game stuttering or packet loss for those with low-end systems. Opera GX also features popular social media integrations into the sidebar, allowing you to access apps like Messenger, Twitter, VK, Twitch, and Discord from the sidebar. I often use Messenger from the sidebar and it is extremely convenient. Head down to the link in the description below or scan the QR code on screen to download Opera GX for free and support an excellent long-term sponsor of the channel. Give it a try. You might just like it, just the same way that I did. So, the Meteor Mark VIII sits at 8.0, which means of course that you can see 7.0s. Things like the ME262, uh, Horton 229, you can see all the way up to the MiG-17, and you can pretty much come across a whole slew of enemies that can do a whole bunch of different things. Uh, you slaughter when you're in a down tier, you are struggling a little bit when you're in an up tier, and this plane is probably one of the best examples of what I like to call BR compression depression. In a matchmaker, you have a 1.0 BR spread. When you are in a full down tier, a plane that suffers from said BR compression depression clubs. And you'll see that in this game. I'm up against uh, F3Ds, I'm up against F84Bs. The Meteor Mark VIII really crushes these enemies quite efficiently and quite brutally. But then when you're up against the top tier, things like the F30 Saber, things like the uh, the F2 Saber, the, the MiG-15 even, and the MiG-17, you'll tend to find that you will struggle more often than not. The Meteor Mark VIII has a couple of good traits. It's got a decent climb rate, it's got decent acceleration, it's got quite excellent roll and turn, particularly at those lower speeds, but at the end of the day, the main downside to this plane is it's very, very slow. Around 920, 930 kilometers per hour slow. It puts it a lot slower than most other jets at 9.0 and at 8.7, who can top out at around 10, 1050. And some of the jets at 7.7 .7 or at 8.0 can even do faster. Things like the uh, LA200 can top out at around, I believe it's 1040. So this is much, much slower and it's a higher battle rating. Of course, there are trade-offs here. Uh, and we shouldn't understate that because in a in a down tier, I would consider the Meteor Mark VIII to be a lot more significant of an opponent than the LA200, especially if you're on the on the front foot in the Meteor Mark VIII, um, and particularly so on the back foot even, because you you have the ability to deal with your opponents in more ways that the opponent can deal with uh, you, and so it leaves you in a bit of a situation, if you will. A bit, of a, a bit of a shitty situation because you're in a plane that is really, really strong, almost too, it is too strong to be fighting 7.0s. Fighting the F-88A is unfair. I genuinely think that this plane is too good to fight things like the uh, F-3D, the uh, F-88A, the ME-262s, um, and a couple of other planes that are sort of situated around this tier. But it is definitely not good enough to be fighting 9.3s, and uh, there are plenty of 9.3s around that would absolutely eat this thing for breakfast. And speaking of eating for breakfast, we're coming up against a 2v2 here. I'm really risking these head-ons, but I'm fairly confident in the ability of the Meteor Mark 8 to evade, and that is one of the things that the Meteor Mark 8 is actually really good at. It's good at defensive flying. 
And that's one of the things that gave it its little niche in the 9.0 meta. You would basically work your way up in a battle. You would find an opponent that was uh, going for you. You'd pick a 1v1 and you would try and execute a commitment to that 1v1. And from that commitment, you would hopefully win a uh, turning engagement. But of course, War Thunder doesn't always work like that. Your enemies don't always sort of engage in a turning engagement. They will often fight to their advantage, which, no surprise, is playing the plane properly. Now, this F3 Demon I have put myself in front of, as you can see, but I have plenty of energy and I can just burst away very, very quickly. I've practically made a critical error, but I've been able to get away without so much as a scratch, and that's allowed me to gain a massive advantage over everyone else on the battlefield. I'm more than above the 262 and the 229s, uh, and pretty much any other enemy that comes in, I can fairly easily deal with in a 1v1. So it's just a matter of working down my opponents, energy trapping them, picking the right enemy, and waiting for them to appear in my gun sights. And that's what the Horton 229 over here has managed to do. He's going to get into my gun sights, and just as I pull into that sort of 7.5 uh, or 750 meter range, I go for a couple of bursts, and it is really hard for me to line up those stealth belts on the Horton 229. It's got such a low profile, but as he burns, I'm fairly confident that the 229 will burn quite quickly and will uh, will will warm my heart with his flames. But we're going to move on here quite swiftly to another enemy here, the F3D. I'm going to go for a quick head-on, again, using those nose-mounted Hispanos, but the F3D manages to evade. Very, very smart move, but I've gone up into the vertical, and again, because everyone's been sort of going around dogfighting, bleeding energy in their jets, uh, it is very easily leaving me in an advantageous uh, situation. Now, of course, most of these pilots I would assume to be novice jet pilots, and, and I'm, like, not to brag, but quite experienced. Or at least I've played enough matches to know better. And so I'm here sort of just mopping up enemies that have low energy whilst in a plane that specializes in uh, high energy capabilities. And so that has pretty much left me in a very easy win-win situation. I've been able to dominate the battlefield, and I've been able to maintain my energy advantage over most of my opponents, almost all match long. And that's what I'm talking about when I say that the uh, Meteor Mark VIII clubs in a down tier. It's simply more able than most other planes to deal with its opponents quite effectively. And the opponents that I'm facing, whilst they might be novices, at the end of the day can very, very easily be someone who's extremely experienced flying an SU-11. Um, but at the same time, I can very easily combat that. In fact, I can very easily combat that in a Meteor Mark III. Uh, but the point is that this plane possesses the ability to do that more so than any other uh, planes at this, at this sort of area. And it kind of feels unfair. Because, especially the 7.0s, it's, it's quite, cl quite clubbing. Uh, it's, it's quite like seal clubbing. And it just sort of doesn't bring you the same satisfaction that fighting in a plane that would otherwise, you know, not be the, the meta or not be the winner, uh, bring. It, it would simply just be more enjoyable to go and fly, say, a vampire that does sit at 8.0 or something that's 7.7, .7, uh, maybe the C Meteor, maybe the Meteor Mark III, which is not quite as powerful. Uh, but honestly, that is the nature of BR Compression Depression. You're going to see in the next match, after I clean up this uh, F-84, I, I can't remember if I clean him up or if someone else cleans him up, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because he's the last guy left on the enemy team, and there's really not much for him. I've come up onto him, but, you know, there's not much that he can do. I'll eventually catch up with him at least in a dive or at least in a dogfight. And there are plenty of enemies that can sort of either keep up with him or out-energy him. And now he's just put himself in a bit of a shit situation. I'm going to be able to dive onto him uh, and I'm very, very within gun range. So it's only a matter of time before I just throttle off, air brakes out, and cruise along behind him because I can out-turn him quite easily. Despite him being a straight-wing plane, the F-84 is a big fat boy. So uh, it's not very long until I set him on fire and burn him to a pop. So, there's an ace, but I don't really feel like this was a very good ace. You don't feel the satisfaction that you feel with other planes. So, we're going to show you a match that is definitely a little bit more satisfying, let's say. Uh, we are here in what I believe to be a pretty much full up tier. There's a MiG-17 on our team that puts us at 9.0, 
And that plane there is an F9F Cougar because no one plays the Panthers. I, I wonder why. Uh, but this F9F is in a bit of a situation and it looks like he's trying to engage his defensive flying capabilities. I am spraying away. But of course, that still leaves me with plenty of ammunition and a wing gone on the Cougar. I really actually like the Cougar. I've done a couple of videos on it. You should check it out. It's cool. It's a cool plane. So I'm going to put my plane up into a vertical. I do have to be careful that the A4E isn't going to missile me. Uh, but this F86A is going to be one of the primary threats. Not because he... It, like, people people do rat on the F86A5 uh, and say it's a bad plane. I think it is a little bit tough to fly. But, you know, maybe I should make a video on it. Maybe I should uh, give it some love. I haven't played it in a very, very long time. But this guy basically played into my hands. And that's what happens when you have lots of teammates around you. This is the best situation for the Meteor Mark 8, where you have lots of teammates around and you have lots of opponents that are bleeding the energy of your teammate, of your, of your opponents. Uh, so you can pretty much just capitalize on the mistakes that your enemies make um, that your teammates are like kind of pseudo setting you up for. Uh, but at the same time, in this case here, you don't really have many other options. You can see here that most planes are escaping the grasp of the Meteor, and that's down to the Meteor's poor top speed. It's simply not going to go any other way. If they want to outrun you, they can. Um, and if some of them want to outclimb you, they actually can too. And so that leaves you in a, in a situation or in a circumstance where you really don't have any control over what happens on the battlefield. You have to wait for your opponents to come to you, and sometimes you have to engage them on their terms, which leaves you at a severe disadvantage. And that's just the way that BR compression, or de, de, BR compression depression pardon me, works. It's just the way it is. And unfortunately, we don't have an infinite spread of battle ratings, and we don't have enough battle rating decompression to actually see this through. And whilst that's not the end of the world, it still leaves the Meteor Mark 8 in a bit of a sad situation where you do absolutely dominate those down tiers like I showed you. And it does feel really lame and lousy because you feel like you're not really achieving anything. But of course, in the up tiers, it feels just as unsatisfying because you've got no sway on the way that the matches go. You can, you know, mop up the odd Cougar here and the odd A4E here and the odd A5 Sabre, but really, what are you doing for your team? Sure, you can get a kill. Sure, you can uh, win a one versus one, but are you f baiting the enemy team down low? Are you supporting your team in a way that, you know, makes them appreciate you and, and sort of helps in a way that forwards the, the outcome of the match. And in some cases, it's really no. The answer is, is no. Because if an enemy wants to outrun you, they can. And if an enemy wants to sort of engage and say you've got an F86 F2 Sabre and you have a MiG-17 that is chasing you, uh, well, the MiG-17 can catch the Sabre and in some circumstances, the Sabre will catch the MiG. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you're a Meteor on either side of that matchup, you're just kind of sitting in the corner waiting for someone to do something. And in this case, the F-86A5 over here has engaged me from behind. I didn't even see him coming. And I think it's just a product of the spotting system. But look, that's all right. We're going to put the Meteor in its uh, sort of best foot. And that is defensive flying. I've just gone for a rolling scissors here. I know that I'm able to get onto the uh, six of the A5 Sabre. And I managed to blast him with an absolutely beautiful round of uh, 20 millimeter cannons. Now, the 20 millimeter cannons are fairly decent, but they're not going to carry you all the way to the end of the game. You might have to go for a couple of refills. You might even sort of run out in certain circumstances. But overall, I think that this plane is a little bit of a, of a tease, if you will. It's okay. It's not particularly satisfying, but you know what? It, it's okay enough. Um, and whilst I probably wouldn't pick this plane as sort of my go-to grinder for Britain, uh, there are certainly other planes that would poke my interest a little bit more, and we'll cover them in a couple of later videos. But I genuinely think that the Meteor has such a storied history throughout War Thunder that you just can't leave it on the shelf for too long. And that's pretty much the main reason why I decided to play it, because it's a plane that I haven't touched in like four years. Uh, and when I do, I kind of get a weird one or two kill match here, one or two kill match there, uh, but nothing particularly special. And that's kind of the way I feel about this plane. Now, in this matchup here, I am in a fairly thick dogfight. And thick is the, uh, is the contrails that are blowing in behind us. 
we're basically engaging targets of opportunity here. This is kind of like your standard dogfight. I just want to make sure of one particular rule, or two particular rules rather. One, that I don't lose all of my speed, and two, that I don't put myself in front of the guns of any enemies. And if you satisfy those two rules, you can actually come out on top of a dogfight fairly well. You don't want to play too aggressively, but also if you play too passively, you're going to starve yourself of kills or more of opportunities to help teammates that might actually need it. Now, this F-80A is above me, so I'm just going to spray fairly generously. I hope that he commits, but he doesn't really. I still set him on fire, though, which is quite lucky, actually. The next shot we're going to come up against here is this R2-Y2. R2-Y2s actually turn at low speed better than the Meteor does, but they are much, much slower. Hopefully I can dispatch him with a couple of 20 mils. I don't get much here. He barely, barely uh, loses track, so I, I just escaped the guns there. Uh, but at the same time, I am able to try and work around this Meteor, oh, this uh, R2-Y2. I'm going to try for a little bit of a cheeky. I do have to reduce my throttle. I have to be super careful because whilst the R2-Y2 does turn better, it does run out of energy quicker. But at the same time, I need to make sure that I don't overblow. And you can see that I'm starting to here. So I've had to cut the throttle. I've had to air brake just to get behind this R2-Y2. I feel like if he had used his uh, throttling a little bit better, maybe if he'd been at lower altitude, I'm not really sure. I'm fairly confident that at speed, the R2-Y2 can cut on the inside of the uh, Meteor Mark 8. But in this case here, he just wasn't able to. I, I think maybe experience got the better of him. Maybe he was stock. Uh, but definitely don't underestimate R2-Y2s and don't take them to a fight that you know that you can't win. Ideally, energy fights are best. You don't really want to engage in something that is not going to be sort of at your advantage. Now, speaking of which, I've decided to engage a bomber. And if you have four Hispanos, I would consider this a general no-no. I just don't think the Hispanos are punchy enough to go bomber slaying. It, pretty much any other 20 mil is good enough for it. Um, and of course, you're going to see me butcher all of my shots here. And it's just going to make the whole situation worse. I'm going to try and get some shots off. I managed to damage his tail. Uh, I think I've got his right flap there. And it looks like he's going to go for a little diverino. So my job is to just get out of there and go home. Maybe hope the SU-11 can finish the job. Uh, but it looks like the B-29 is uh, very, very quickly sailing for the ground. Um, and that's pretty much it. So if you can get lucky, yeah, you can get some bomber kills. But I don't recommend going after bombers at all. Because most of the time you'll end up with a damaged engine. And if you do this early on in the game, you're going to find yourself having a really, really hard time. But that's a very, very easy way to get yourself another ace. Again, in a full down tier, I could not have done that in a full up tier. So ladies and gents, that is the Meteor F Mark 8. A little bit of a tease, a little bit of a plane that sort of rubs you the wrong way most of the time, but at the end of the day has so much story behind it that you really just can't ignore it. Anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring today's video. And of course, take care, and I'll catch you next time.